Hello, my name is Stephen Mal. I'm the regional sales manager here for McCormick Systems, and I will be taking you through the power of all-in-one estimating. So in McCormick, we start you out with a one through five step process. We like to keep it very simple for our users. So it starts out here, step one, jobs. And that's where we arrive here on the job screen. So this is basically a digital filing cabinet where you're going to have all your past jobs, current jobs you may be working on, a um, lot of you know customization on this screen. So really, you can you know visual uh, you know see this screen as you want, right? So you can create these folders up at the top here. These are just some example folders on my end where you can have it sectioned out for each year. If you're your industrial jobs, commercial jobs, residential, or all your jobs. So you have a lot of ability here to or be organized. And that's where it starts really is organization. Um, also with these columns up at the top here, you can set these up and you could decide what details you wanna show on your job screen. Now really you're doing one of two things on this screen. You're either gonna be opening up an existing job to you know, maybe just finalize it, uh, maybe pull reports from it, or maybe you've been awarded the job and you're coming back in here a few months down the road to do a change order, right? Otherwise you're gonna be going over here and creating a new job. So um, for the demonstration today, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize this job here, 149 West Boston. It is a job we have a bit of a start to in the system. So I wanna hit the details on that. Now, this would be the same screen if I hit new job, just without this information provided to us on the right. So at a minimum, you wanna name the job and then you can add in this detailed information if you'd like, this is optional. But if you do add this information in, it will populate into the proposal sheet at the end and in your reports. So on our system, you could take it from your PDF plan all the way to the proposal on our system. So uh, a very complete option. Then uh, from here, we can bring in our plans. Um, you have some example folders here on my end. Uh, you could just create these. Uh, all you do is just right click on your sheets, add a folder, and now you have a new folder. And you can name it whatever you want. You know, this is just a way to stay organized. So we'll just name this one, let's say revised plans, because I would like to keep all my revision plans separate from my originals. So just an example there of why you would create those. Uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and add my drawings. So when you hit add drawings, it accesses your computer file explorer. And then from here, you can bring in any imaging file from PDF, TIFF, JPEG, PNG, Google Earth, really any Google image is totally fine. Um, and you may have you know, one file that has over 100 plans in it. That's totally fine. You can actually bring in multiple files at once. So really convenient. I'm just gonna go ahead, drag all these plans in and hit open. Now all our plans are going to load in to this preview mode. So it makes it really convenient for you. So all our plans will be separated out from each file. So we'll let all our plans load in here. Now you could go through these plans, obviously, you know, preview them and get a better look just by double clicking on it. Now I could go through these plans also individually and import selected plans, right? Or I could just import all. So in this example, I'm just gonna import all of those plans. Now I have all my plans tied to my job. You know, I can go into this plan as well if I wanted to make any adjustments to possibly the name of this plan. Um, I can also color code it by status, which I think is cool if, you know, maybe, uh, you know, one estimator takes the plans marked green and the other one takes the ones marked blue, right? Could be a, a nice way to utilize that. Uh, and then you can also leave notes to it as well. And really, that's going to wrap up our first step. All we're doing is creating a job and attaching our plans. So now that we finished our first step jobs, we are on to our second step labels. So when creating labels, you're organizing where you put your takeoff. So this is one example for this job specifically, and this may be very similar, if not exact, you know, how you like to break out the job. But essentially what we're doing is working granular from left to right. So from big to small. 
in that first column we have a bid package there in some cases you may just have a base bid uh, in some cases you may need to show an alternative price one or alternative two or let's say down the road you've been awarded this job and you need to come back in here to do a change order well it's super easy in our system all you do is add a change order in now i've just created my first change order for this job Right, so this is actually unique to McCormick. You don't have to have a change order system. You don't have to create an entire new job. If you wanna create a change order, you can do it within the same job folder. So very convenient. Then next column breaks into the buildings. Next column goes into the levels, the floors. You could do it by area as well. And then in the next column broken out by systems. So if you wanted to have your power, lighting, voice data, fire alarm separated, you can. And then if you wanted to, uh, you don't have to, uh, you can break it into sheets even further. But essentially here on this screen, it's up to you. You know, you decide how you want your job to be organized uh, because, you know, um, th there's many different ways to do this. And you can use two columns. You could use all five columns. It's really up to you. But each column here is a subset of the previous. And then we have some highlighted in blue here. Uh, those are highlighted in blue because this is a job in process and there's currently takeoff in those areas and systems. So now we've created those labels, we close out of that step and now we're on to our third step takeoff. First thing I wanna mention here on this dropdown, this is what we call the active label set. So here we have our first column with our bid packages. We have a second column here with buildings, floors, systems and then even further into our sheets right so currently i'm on my base bid for building a floor one power sheet one so if i were to do any takeoff right now that's specifically where it's going so always want to keep in mind of your active label set over here we have the database we have an items database and we also have an assemblies database so we're going to go ahead and start with items first now this is one single part right so poking through this to find materials you use the menu the menu drives the database very simple to use as well it's just three or four clicks and you'll find that material very easily so let's take a look we'll just go with wire copper stranded copper thhn very easily in that last column where it's lowercase i found that material so now i'm going to select 10 thhn copper stranded wire and since this is highlighted in my database i could take it off right now manually and i will and i'll type in 200 enter now check it out it's in my audit trail so my audit trail is basically my receipt it's meant to track my work so in my audit trail we could see here the part taken off the quantity taken off who took it off also the date and time stamp of when it was taken off and then how it was taken off so this m in the audit trail that stands for manual entry this is if like you didn't have digital plans or maybe you did a job walk realize you need to add some materials to the job you can do it manually if you need to but in real time i'm sure you'll go straight into design estimating pro pull up your plan and do it all digitally all right now moving over to assemblies Let's take a look at some receptacles. So I'll go devices, we'll do standard grade, and I'll select my receptacles. Now here's my list of receptacles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select this duplex standard. And since I'm on an assemblies, I can hit buy products. And now you can see everything included in this assembly. So we provide a very complete database with pre-built assemblies everything from residential commercial industrial heavy industrial low volt high volt hvac airport highway so a lot in this database very complete but in mccormick it's very customizable if i wanted to add material to this database i could if i wanted to adjust these pre-built assemblies you can very easily on mccormick whether i'm changing the name of this or i'm adding material it brings up an instance of the database with a transfer bar now i could just add material in i can also delete material and i can also go to that material specifically and maybe just change the size of it so this is all uh, really convenient on the McCormick system. Now, if I go to the top here and I change this to let's say floor two, you could see I actually have a different audit trail because I haven't done, you know, uh, take off for floor two yet. That was for floor one. So now you could see I have a different audit trail and that's exactly what I mean. So 
our active label set is going to our audit trail will show exactly what our active label set says so it's specific to the active label set at this point we're going to go ahead and go into design estimating pro this is our built-in digital takeoff system this is where we truly show that we are an all-in-one program this is built in they communicate with this communicates with the estimating system so first thing we're going to do is select our plans here are the, those folders we created in that first step. Here are my plans that I attached. I color coded this one green. I wanna go ahead and select that. Now, next thing we do is set a scale. So when setting a scale on McCormick, you have three different options. You can hand enter a custom scale. You can set one from a known point, or if you know that scale, you can go ahead and enter that in. We also provide engineering scales as well. So for this example, I have a scale of 1 8 equals a foot on my plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then also, this is all very easy to use. Zooming in, zooming out is a scroll wheel on my mouse. And then panning around is clicking the scroll wheel down. So it's a very simple process here to do digital takeoff. Now, before I do takeoff, maybe I wanna check my scale. I wanna make sure this is accurate. So I'm gonna to go to the top here, I'm gonna grab this ruler tool, and I'm gonna check my scale. Perfect, it's accurate. You know, and if I didn't have a scale like this, I could always check like a doorway here. I know this doorway is three feet wide, so I could just check it right there. All right. I know my skills accurate. I'm ready to do takeoff. We're going to go ahead and start with basic counting, basic measuring, and I'll start going into some of the features. So let's go into the database here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a duplex 20 amp. And now this is highlighted in my database that will be shown as my active part in Design Estimating Pro. And this is exactly what I mean by all in one. They are communicating. It makes it very simple. So now when I mark my plan digitally, I'm just going to go through here and left click to take off these receptacles. And with each click, it's accounting for everything in that assembly, the price of the material, plus the labor hours to install. So very complete. This is where the power of the all-in-one solution comes from right here. All this that I took off is now estimated. We can see it in my audit trail. Here's the material taken off, here's the quantity, and now there's a P which stands for my plan, and there's the drawing that it's on. So I don't have to have multiple programs. I don't have to save it and then send it to my estimating system. I can select the parts from my database and take them off in Design Estimating Pro, and it's all estimated for me. And it auto saves as I go. So if I were to shut this down right now and reopen it, it would be right where I left off. So you never have to worry about losing your work. Also, a lot of customization in McCormick. If I wanted to, I have the ability to change these symbols. You know, you can go over to select, which is the space bar to toggle you back and forth. Now that I'm on select, you know, I could always move these around if I needed to. I could double click on it. Maybe I want to change the shape style. We do have that design build aspect to the program. So I can go ahead and change that to a duplex. And now I can tell it looks like a duplex. So super helpful if you work off any blank plans. And that's basic counting, just going through left clicking to take off those receptacles. Now I wanna show you linear takeoff. Um, and I also wanna mention having two monitors is definitely ideal for this setup because you'll have Design Estimating Pro on one screen with your database and audit trail on the other. So not required, but I definitely recommend that. Now going into my database, I'm gonna select some branch, EMT, we'll go ahead and select some steel set, screw to a one hole strap, and then my number 12 branch assembly. So from here, I'm gonna select my branch assembly. Let's go with a three number 12 half inch EMT, steel set, screw to a one hole strap. And now you can see everything included in this assembly. So again, very complete. We're also gonna provide that wire, the couplings every 10 feet, screws, washers, conduit connectors, all of that's in there for you automatically. So when you take it off digitally on your plan, this is all accounted for. Okay, now we have this branch assembly selected in my database that will be shown as my active part here in Design Estimating Pro in this bottom left corner. Now, I'm just going to go through here and do some takeoff. So we have it on connected. You have two options. You have single and connected. So connected would be a click to start, a click to change directions, and then it would be a double click to end my run. So very simple to use. 
same thing on my branch i have ability to customize this i can hit my space bar which brings me to select and then i can double click on this branch and i can make some adjustments if i need to um, and also i i always recommend a text overlay i think this is really cool for the branch and you could always change them to different colors to identify different branch assemblies uh, but in this case i want to show a text overlay i'll say three number 12 half inch also it's going to tell you the length of that branch run too just by clicking on it but now essentially i just added a text overlay showing what this branch is so that can definitely be very helpful moving forward now if i need to account for any vertical values i could just go ahead and right click on this branch add a drop value to the start of this run to the end of this run to the start and the end or exactly where i clicked right so in this example i'm just going to add a drop value to the end of this run and that will give me a default drop value of eight feet from the ceiling to my panel now that is the default setting however i could change that very easily in my settings or i could just type into this box and let's say 10 feet now i have a 10 foot vertical drop value from the ceiling to my panel that is how you manually can account for vertical values now, I, oh, I do have a feature up at the top here called auto drops. I can turn that on where it's auto start, auto end, and then I could override that eight foot value. So maybe I want, you know, seven feet at the, the beginning of this run and I, I want 12 feet at the end, right? And I'll just show you an example here and do a random branch run to show you it automatically accounts for those vertical values. So that could be very useful moving forward. Now, I want to mention anything I've taken off digitally on my plan, it goes into my hot list here, and you can move this wherever you want, right? And, and now I have access to the materials I've taken off on my plan right here. So now I can just reactivate those parts. I don't have to go into my database. So everyone really loved this hot list here. So what we did was we created a permanent hot list, and that is what we call our favorites list. So what you wanna do with that is put all the material you typically use for jobs inside of this list. Now, this is a very fast and efficient way to access materials. So I can just now select from my favorites list, and you can have multiple lists if you wanted one for residential, one for commercial, maybe one for industrial, and then put all the materials you use for those jobs in this list, and now just select it, and take it off on my plan. So I just took off three switches there and same thing with these switches. I'm gonna go over to select and I actually want these to look more like a switch. You can see we have single gang, two gang, three gang. We're just gonna go ahead and select our single gang switch here and now it looks more like a switch. So very useful. Now I wanna show you some amazing features here we're going to go ahead and do auto count um, so i'm going to switch to a fresh plan my scale is one eighth equals a foot let's go ahead and set that now this is really helpful um, if you have a plan with a lot of the same symbols on it. It's already easy enough to go through here and just left click on those symbols. But if you wanted to run an auto count, this can definitely speed up that estimating process. So what we're gonna do is go to the top to auto count. And I'm gonna put a box to, sh to tell McCormick where I want it to search, just so it's helpful to not pick up the legend or anything else. Now at this point, it's prompting me to define that criteria. So what I'll do, I'm gonna zoom in and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a small box around the symbol I'd like it to search. It's showing me a picture of that symbol and then I just go ahead and hit add search. It has a built-in calibration as well, so it'll calibrate for best possible results. All right, let's take a look. So what I usually do here on my results list is I check all and then I go through to see if it picked up anything I don't want, just because it's from your highest match rate percentage down to the lowest. So there's a chance it may have picked up some stuff here on the bottom we don't want. No big deal. <clears throat> Very simple. We can proofread that and change it. So I could just right click here and I can uncheck my items below. Now I don't have any of those other outlets that I have selected. So at this point, I'm gonna grab my telephone outlet out of my favorites list. You could see that is my active part. And now I'm gonna hit accept takeoff. Check this out. 
automatically took off and accounted for those telephone outlets for me. So if I go to the top here and I turn on my legend, this is basically a live audit trail on screen as I do my takeoffs. So this legend here is a really nice tool to utilize. But essentially, I just took off 50 telephone outlets in less than 30 seconds. All in my estimate. And same thing on these, you know, I have a little handle here, I can spin them around and adjust them where I want them. Or I could just right click and I can rotate it. Of course, I can double click and I can make adjustments to the shape, the color, the size, all that good stuff. So a lot of ability to customize. But that is our auto count feature, very accurate, very complete, and it's definitely going to speed things up for you. Going back to my previous plan here. So yeah, that is our all-in-one system. You mark your plan and it is automatically estimated for you in your audit trail here. And you could see we have some adjusted quantities. Those are those drop values that we added in. So it will highlight in bold and highlight yellow showing you've made that edit. At this point, we've done our takeoff digitally. Everything's good there. We are ready for our four-step extend. So here we provide a very detailed extension report. First thing I want to mention in the top right corner is the total of material costs for the job and the total labor hours to install. And looking through this report, we have a full itemized list. This is down to the wire, nuts, screws, washers. Everything's laid out for us here. In the next column, we have the quantities of that material. And then as a set default report on my program, I have price one, most competitive pricing, along with bid labor, our McCormick issued labor. Here is that drop down. You can choose from those different combinations of price and labor. You can get a full a material list. You can get a full assembly list. You can get a lot of good information off this report. Many different ways we can look at this report as well. I can filter maybe by quota materials. So now I know all the quota materials for this job. And of course, I can come over here and I can send this out to my supplier to get pricing. So you can filter however you'd like. I can also collapse this by my cost code. So now I can see here's my branch rough, total material cost, total labor hours to install. And then I can hit this and extend out everything included in my branch rough. And then same thing for my trim. Here's the total material cost, labor hours to install, and then everything included on my trim. So really nice to be able to see it by cost codes, which we do provide. I could take this a step further and I can go into my labels tab. And from here, I can decide how I visually wanna see this report. Here are my five columns that I created in my second step. And then from here, I can decide how I visually wanna see it. You know, Maybe I wanna separate them out by my floors. Let's take a look to see what that looks like. Now I have my underground, total material cost, total labor hours to install with everything included for my underground. Same thing for floor one. And same thing for floor two. So all we did there was separate our report by floors. And you could utilize any of these check boxes, to decide you know, what you want to see on this report. I could look at just my underground or floor one power, right? Or floor everything for floor three or everything for just building A. So you use these check boxes to specifically see exactly what you want on your report. So something to keep in mind when you're creating these labels, how do you visually want to see your report? You could drill down as detailed as you'd like. And at this point, we're happy with everything. Our report looks good. We're gonna send this to our summary. Just telling us here it's locking it to protect our work. Perfect, hit okay on that, close out of my extension. And that leads us to our fifth and final step, the bid summary. Now here, we're looking at our top sheet. I have the total and material cost for the job. And just below that, there's labor. And there's a check mark there. And what that's indicating is there's something required. So at this point, we need to apply our 
labor rates to the hours for this. So let's go ahead and jump over to our labor tab and now we can apply our rates. So we have a total of 2,514 hours for this job. Well, this is something you will set up in your template with your workers, your rates, and then of course you could set up a burden as well. So a couple ways we could do this. Let me show you one way where I build out a crew and I have a foreman on this job. I have a sub foreman, a journeyman, and an apprentice. So what I did here was build out my crew. I've applied my rates, and now I apply these rates to the hour. So I could do it by the hour amount, or I could do it by percentage and save me on the math. So we'll go ahead, we'll say 50% of my hours is going to my foreman, 25% to my sub foreman, we'll say 15% to my journeyman, and the remaining 10% of the hours will go to the apprentice. So now I've applied 100%, of these hours to these rates. And that is one way you can do that. And it provides a lot of good detailed information with your burden, your burden percentage, the amount, and your average labor rate as well. And of course, it's McCormick, it's very customizable. So we could add lines here if we needed to. Maybe I just did a flat rate for my job. And then I did 100% of the hours at whatever rate, you know, or I did it by name. Or hey, maybe I had a helper out there. So my point is you can customize this however you want. And you could take that a step further and you could set up different labor groups with different workers and different rates. And also you could set your burden up and get detailed, you know, as detailed as FICA, you know, workman's comp, health insurance, you know, all this stuff. So a lot of great details on this. At this point, we've applied our rates to the hours and we're ready to move on to our next tab quotes. So this is where we enter in the lump sum of quoted materials for the job. So for this example, I'll just say, hey, we had 5,000 in fixtures. Now I could also apply the supplier and I can attach a cost code as well. And of course I could add lines on this tab. You know, this is if you wanted to account for your fixtures in a lump sum. I could also add my quoted material pricing in on the extension report where I filtered by quoted material. I could add it in there if I wanted, or I could add some more lines. Maybe I do fixture A, fixture B, fixture C in the price per fixture. So totally up to you how you wanna account for that quoted material. And now we're going to move on to subcontractors. So anything we're subbing out for the job, maybe a saw cut, core drill, a crane, whatever you need. You know, Let's say for example, um, a core drill at $1,200. Next one over would be DJE, direct job expense, permits and fees, fuel cleanup, parking. Let's just say, for example, we had 800 in permits and fees. Equipment is if you're renting equipment or maybe you own the equipment and you just wanna account for cost. We can account for that here. And I'm just gonna say, for example, I had a trailer at $160 and I actually needed that and that was for the week and I needed it for three weeks. Let's say that. And it's given me a total of $480 for that trailer because we do provide a multiplier in there for you, which is very convenient. Next tab over is the bond table. So if you ever need to bond your job, uh, we do provide the bond table with the ranges and the percentages here. Now for our last tab, the tax tab. So wherever you're doing this job, you wanna enter in your local tax rate right here. Now at this point, we can go back into our top sheet and we can see everything here accounted for, right? Now at this point, we need to add our overhead and profit to the job. And I wanna mention that this is customizable. I could add tabs down here. I can name it whatever I want. So really this, this can be you know, adjusted however you wanna see it for your system. So maybe I make one for an indirect job expense and I got a supervisor on the job or something. you know. So depending on how you wanna utilize that, but all of this can be very customizable and there's no limitations. So at this point, we're gonna add our overhead and profit to the job. I could add it individually into these columns here, or I could add it to the total of my job. So let's say, for example, uh, we'll say 15% overhead, and you could do it, yeah, dollar amount or percentage, and then I'm gonna say 16% profit. And now I've applied this to the job as a total. 
but I could make adjustments if I need to. I could go through here, maybe I don't want overhead on my labor, or maybe I want to account for some additional profit into my quoted material, but I actually wanted less profit on my labor. So you can go through here in these columns and make those adjustments. And then on the right, you'll have everything laid out for you, right? So the raw cost tax, raw cost with tax, overhead, profit, total return, total return percentage, and now we have that sell price for the job. So really, at this point, we've gone through that five-step process, and we now have our total sell price for this job. So at this point, uh, we can go ahead and bring this right into the proposal sheet and then send that out and hopefully be awarded this job. So to give you a quick overview of everything that we went over, our first step was jobs. All we did was create a job and bring in your plans. Second step is your labels, organize where you put your takeoff. Third step was takeoff, we went into the database, we went into Design Estimating Pro, we did all our takeoff digitally, and then our extension report. That was all the material, the price of the material, the labor hours to install. We went ahead, we sent that to our bid summary, which we are just on added any additional expenses, got our total and sell price, added our overhead and profit, and now we've just completed a job with McCormick. So please feel free to reach out, email, you can call the office, ask for Steven, phone number is 800-444-4890. I would gladly go into more depth on a personalized one-on-one -on -one demonstration with you. But I appreciate everybody, and this is an excellent solution to streamline your business, and thank you.